I wanted to show you the great progress we've made on the motorcycle. Not only have we put on that FE device in the previous video, but we've also put on an AFR meter. I've tested everything, it seems to work perfectly, and it gives me a good indication of where my fueling is set. Here's a closer look of the mess of wiring that we have right now. I'll show you a diagram of how I put it all together. This is all before cutting it down to size and making everything nice and neat and tidy. Basically what we've done is we've taken the signal from the O2 sensor into the AFR gauge and then from the AFR gauge into the FE device all in series and that goes into the engine control management module of the motorcycle. As far as wiring, this was actually a pretty easy job. I just wanted to make sure that I tested everything first and I'll tell you some of the results that I had. The FE device is really an awesome device in that it doesn't affect the O2 signal at all on the O2 sensor side. It only affects the signal on the ECM side of the FE device. This is really great. That means we can tap into that O2 sensor wire and get a reading on the AFR gauge with no interference. The AFR gauge itself had me a little bit confused because the input wires actually were reading 1.65 volts with nothing connected. This had me quite concerned for a while until I connected it up and that voltage bleeds off fairly quickly as soon as you start up the bike. Once I figured that out, I felt it was safe to go ahead and plug everything in and go ahead and test it. Make sure you do a little bit of stretching before you start working on any motorcycle. This is your Mini 3 air to fuel ratio meter. It is part number BA003214 from COSO. Put the air fuel ratio meter where you want it and then go ahead and snake your wires down. Then I'm going to go ahead and follow this bundle here all the way through the motorcycle. That makes for a nice neat installation. Next go ahead and plug the second wire into the little white bit. So you have one short connector. This is your female and you also have a male connector here. We're going to cut these off, but I have to make note of which side's which. One connects into the ECU, that's going to be the short guy, or female side, and one connects into the O2 sensor, which is the longer male side. I'm going to go ahead and mark the side that goes into the ECU, so I don't lose track. In part one, I showed you this relatively simple diagram on how to connect just the FE device, going from the O2 sensor to the FE device, from the FE device to the ECM, and then of course you supply power to that FE device. Now we're going to go to a little bit more complicated circuit. So in that original diagram, this O2 sensor wire connected directly into this white wire on the FE device. Now what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect that junction and instead connect it into the yellow side or unmarked side of the air fuel ratio gauge. And then the return line, the black marked line, we're gonna run that to the white line on the FE device. Aside from that, the actual sensor wires remain the same and the green line will continue on to the original plug and then on to the ECM. So that's all we're doing is we're just adding this circuit in series with this FE device. And then of course, just run our power line and our ground line to the air fuel ratio meter. What that gives you is an FE device plus your air fuel ratio meter, which is basically your poor man's auto-tune fuel controller with an O2 sensor gauge. I also wanted to show you these really cool waterproof butt connectors here by Dorman. Part number 85244 and 85245. These guys are amazing. And what they do is you go ahead and put the wire in one side, you crimp it down, you put the other wire in the other side, you crimp it down. And then you use a heat gun or a torch to shrink the tubing and it makes a perfect waterproof connection. This is super fast compared to my standard technique, which is to go ahead and solder a connection, put heat shrink tubing over the top and heat it up. It's also probably a better application since solder and vibration don't mix very well while these crimped connections work really good. And once you've shrunk it down, it makes a really cool connection that looks like this. Remember the tap of fuse from last time going and the ground over here. I went ahead and built a new connector that splits the power off into two connectors. One that goes to the FE device and one that's going to go back to this AFR meter. Here's the power cord that I built for this AFR meter connecting directly into the positive and negative leads from that AFR device. I connected a male that goes into the O2 sensor and a female that's going to connect into the first white wire from the FE device. All right, let's do some wire tracing. Here's your O2 sensor right down here. The wire comes up along here, 
follows up here. Here's my first connector. This goes around here, and that connects into the first wire, unmarked side of our ARFR meter. The return line right here, which was the marked side that we did, connects here, follows us around, still following, to this white wire on the FE device. That white wire comes around here to the back side, straight on into the actual FE device, which is right down here. And then the green wire from the FE device comes on out, comes around here, still tracing, back around, and into this original plug that goes into the ECM. So that's circuit one. Here's your second circuit, which is your power circuit. You've got your tap a fuse to your positive. You also have your ground line coming up here. It goes into this connector, which I created a splitter. So you've got power off of this, your positive and negative, going up to your AFR meter right here. And the other side of that comes around down here and plugs into your black and red lines of your FE device, and that all comes back to the FE device down and under here. All right, we'll let this heat up a little bit and see if that AFR gauge starts displaying anything here. Okay, perfect. So it's claiming rich right now. Uh, overly rich, so it's not in the display yet. Let it warm up a little bit more, see if we get anything. Okay, I just saw it flip over to 12.2, which is probably the uh, lowest reading it can give as far as air fuel ratio. Take it out for a uh, quick test drive and see how it does. So one of the neat things about these Honda Trails is it doesn't have a clutch, so I'm gonna hold the camera here and see how it does. Try that again. So I can't really complain about that performance. I'm gonna take it out for a longer test drive. I'll use a couple of zip ties, hold it together. See how it's actually doing at 45 to 50 miles an hour. See if this ECM is learning. I love the fact that you can go ahead and add one of these directly in line with the FE device without the FE device affecting it. It's a pretty cool setup, really super cheap. Now that we have that FE device and air fuel ratio meter on, now it just comes down to optimization. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'll be having a video that goes through a number of different fuel injector sizes, everything from 115 cc per minute all the way up to 235 cc per minute to find the most optimum fuel injector for this particular configuration that I have the motorcycle in. If you like this type of content, please subscribe. I had a lot of fun putting this video together for you. I have a lot more planned on this motorcycle. See you next time. Line from the air fuel ratio meter to the white line of the FE. And there's my cat. Yes. All right. I love you too. Come on. You can see my cat has taken up residence over the diagram. So I'm going to have to remove him and try this a little bit differently.